In this course, I'm describing how to add interactive maps to apps built for Android devices using the Google Maps Android API v2. This API is the successor to an older version, version 1. That version is now deprecated. If you built apps using that version, they should still work, but you can't get new API keys for that version anymore. For new applications, you must use version 2. Here are some of the kind of apps you might want to build using the Google Maps API. Perhaps you want to build a store or other location finder, or you want to build an app that finds distances between locations, or you want to find and display the user's current location using GPS or one of the other ways of finding the current location. The API provides all of this functionality. There are, however, times when you might want to do something that's already available in the actual Google Maps application. And I'll describe late in the course how to take a location and pass it to Google Maps through an Android intent. There are some very important rules that you need to know about using this API, known as the Terms of Service. The API and most of the services that I'll describe are free, but there are some very important terms you need to know about. You can find these Terms of Service at this URL, developers.google.com slash maps slash terms. I encourage you to read through the terms of service completely. And if you're not sure whether your app matches those terms, get legal advice. Here are some of the key terms that everyone should know about. In order to use the API, you must have a Google account. And once you have that Google account, you'll get something called an API key that you plug into your application. Your application must display an attribution notice, a screen that describes what the Google services are and how they're supposed to be used. The actual text of this screen is provided by Google, and you'll get it by using a utility class that's a part of the API. Some of the services that you might want to use, such as geocoding or getting directions, might require an enterprise license. All of these services are free up to a certain point. For example, an app can have up to 2,500 geocoding requests per day, but after that, an enterprise license might be required. If you're not sure, or if you know you need an enterprise license, check the documentation here, developers.google.com slash maps slash documentation slash business. Here are some things you should not do. You can't just re-implement Google Maps or Google Earth and do your own versions of these applications. The API is designed to add maps to other applications, not replace the existing ones. You're also very specifically forbidden from creating point-to-point -point direction applications that might be used to replace the Google version. You can't create just a wrapper to redistribute the API. The API is free for download from Google directly, and you shouldn't redistribute it other than as part of your unique application. Don't hide any copyright or trademark notices, and don't hide any advertising. If you're not sure about any of these rules and whether your app follows them, reread the terms of service and get some advice where needed. And with all those details out of the way, let's get started learning how to add maps to apps.